Istanbul is an unusual place for many reasons, not just for its unique geographical position straddling Europe and Asia, and not just for its hectic and colorful history, the legacy of which is evident throughout the city, and not even for its rich food culture that takes the very best of homegrown tradition and blends them with the spoils of imperialism and the techniques of passing merchants. No, what makes Istanbul so unusual is its blend of old and new. This is a city that feels effortlessly modern and ancient in perfect harmony, and it's that unusual blend that makes Istanbul so captivating. Istanbul is a huge city. In terms of population alone, it's triple the size of Ankara, Turkey's capital. Nearly 20 million people fill Istanbul's three distinct regions split by the Bosphorus Strait, the Estuary of the Golden Horn, and the Sea of Marmara to the south. And each of those regions has something to offer, so it's imperative that you endeavor to experience as much of Istanbul as you can. So let's talk transport. The airport situation in Istanbul was complicated for a long time. Old airports closing and then not closing. New airports opening, but with delays. And secondary airports opening because old airports were just too busy. But the dust has settled and there are now just two airports to contend with. Sabia Gochen International Airport on the Anatolian side of the city and the mighty Istanbul Airport, Europe's busiest. While on totally different sides of the city, both airports are reasonably equidistant from the city center. From Sevilla, you can take the M4 Metro into town, where you can then connect to other transport options to get you to your final destination. For Istanbul Airport in the north of the city, your best bet is the Havaist buses. They serve destinations throughout Istanbul, many of which are near onward transportation options. Tickets are around 140 lira, and the journey into town will take roughly 90 minutes depending on traffic. You can buy a ticket on board using all major debit and credit cards. Public transport in Istanbul is excellent, and there's been significant investment and expansion over the last 20 years. There's an extensive light rail system with six metro lines, four tramway lines, and believe it or not, three funiculars, and not to mention the extensive water transport network, which connects the various parts of the city that run across the Bosphorus and the Golden Horn. That may sound like a lot of systems to wrap your head around, but mercifully, they are all linked together with these, this damn bull cart. Now these are well worth getting, even if you're only here for a day, because they essentially pay for themselves after just four trips. You put a 70 lira deposit on them essentially to buy it, but that goes towards credit towards any journey on any type of public transport. You can buy them from the conveniently located but very temperamental machines, the yellow machines, look for those at every metro and tram stop. So it's really worth grabbing one of these. Google Maps does a great job of linking the various transport options together, so don't be afraid to rely on it for public transport directions, but also for walking directions. And speaking of walking, despite the hills, this is a fantastic city to explore on foot, especially when you consider that many of the bridges that cross the Golden Horn are pedestrian friendly. So not only can you get to where you need to go on foot, but you also get some fantastic views of the city while you're doing it. Taxis are legion, but can be incredibly scammy, almost to the point of being not worth the hassle, frankly. Public transport system here is really good, so the chances of you actually needing a taxi are low. But if you do need one, make sure the meter is on and running, that you follow your route on your phone to make sure you're not going the long way, and when legitimate tolls are added up to your fare at the end of the journey, make sure the numbers add up. Uber is available, but frankly, it's just a way of hailing taxis. You'll still pay the metered fare and are still susceptible to the whims of the taxi driver's scruples. So, be aware. 
I am a huge advocate of mental health. I've had my own therapist since 2006, and my life is immeasurably better as a result. So I'm a vocal supporter of access to mental health resources, which is why I'm excited to tell you about BetterHelp. BetterHelp's entire mission is to make therapy accessible, which is really important because finding a therapist you click with can actually be kind of hard. BetterHelp makes it much easier because it's online, it's remote, and by answering just a few questions, BetterHelp can match you up with a credentialed therapist in just a few days. It's easy to sign up. Just click on the link in the description below or visit betterhelp.com slash attache. Now, clicking that link does help support the channel, but more importantly, it gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp so you can get connected to a therapist and start your mental health journey today. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, finding a fit with a therapist is really important. So if you don't click, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost. So if life is feeling a little harder these days, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com attache or just click on the link in the description below. We, uh, we should begin to talk about food, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> For a trusted and enthusiastic authority on all things Istanbul food shape, we meet local culinary backstreets food expert, Essin. Welcome to our beautiful city. And for what it's worth, Essin and I are very much on the same wavelength. Everything uh, is a lot better when it is less healthy, more delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Even just a cursory glance around the starting line, a local food market, presents colorful and delicious food in every direction. The raw materials, if you will, for the deliciousness that lies ahead. And soon it becomes obvious what fuels this vibrant and vivacious culture. Look, this is already his 10th glass. <laughs> no, not that. Turkish people keep drinking tea all day long. You know, uh, tea is something very cheap. Each time you order a tea, you cannot find change. So you buy these plastic tokens from your tea men, like 100, 200. After you had a tea, you put one, so it's paid. Yes, Alex, but what about Turkish coffee? Hush your mush, viewers, I'm on it. In none other than the old home of Istanbul's coffee vendors for a taste of the good stuff and a spot of breakfast. But not before more tea, of course. How could this old gem of a building and its proprietors function without it? First up, simit. Turkish people, almost everyone uh, has one a day because it's very delicious. Uh, mostly it's for breakfast, you know, they grab a simit, a piece of cheese and a tea. But there must be carb. Right. You know, if there is no carb, it's no breakfast. <laughs> Emin spreads a heady concoction of honey-topped clotted cream onto a simit for a typically decadent Turkish breakfast oh, wow. treat. Sir, now you're yeah. blessed. Pop-tarts eat your heart out. Oh my god. So good, right? Olives, honey, cheese, and spices. The Turkish really know how to start their day. Afiatos. Oh, thank you. I'd like to see the good people of Turkey presented with a bowl of boarding school porridge. I want to offer you some Turkish coffee here. In a haze of cheese, figs, and carbs, we'd almost forgotten our main mission, Turkish coffee. Turkish coffee is the only coffee in the world which is cooked. That's why you cannot have it everywhere. You can find it everywhere, but it never tastes the same. Cooked, unfiltered Turkish coffee has roots in the Ottoman Empire and continues to energize Istanbul locals to this day. The brew is strong, but delicious. Enjoy it. It's wonderful. <laughs> yep. And also has somewhat of a cosmic quality to it. So you flip your cup like this, you know, you make it a little bit mass. So you make a wish here. For generations, fortunes have been foretold by deciphering the grain at the bottom of the coffee cup. A story assembled from the symbolic dregs all represent one's fate. All of which are positive, I am relieved to add. You see a fish, it means your wish comes true. You see a bird, you know, birds used to carry the news. You see a plane, you're traveling. Right. Oh, look at that. Oh, more travel. You heard it here first, friends. I can see the future. You can see the future. And I see a huge dolphin here, you see? Getting a dolphin. No, not like that. <laughs> when this drop comes down this fast, that means your wish comes true. 
and so secure in the knowledge that we have more travels ahead of us and I'm getting a friggin' dolphin, we head out for more Istanbul delicacies. Stopping into one of the city's 3,000 mosques gives us a chance to literally and figuratively digest. All these uh, small pieces are created separately. This is real mother of pearl, by the way. This, these are all handmade, curved, and uh, they are assembled together like this, you know, like puzzle, uh, without using any glue or any nail. And this technique is called Kündekari technique. It took a longer time to create this gate than this building. So it's a very special piece. And it's one religious experience after another as we leave the mosque for offerings of kofta, That's so good. Turkish delight, wonderful, baklava, and a delicious, astringent, spicy beef head soup before having a very necessary sit down and the mandatory doner. So when you're looking for doner, which you have to have when you're in Istanbul, you gotta look for the layers. If it doesn't the layers, then they, they're cheating and they're using ground meat and kind of making a giant meatball. Look for the layers. This one has layers of tomato and pepper, which is not just delicious prospect, but beautiful to look at. And then there's a lump of fat on the top, which slowly melts down the spit to make it nice and juicy the whole time it's cooking. It's absolutely beautiful to look at, and I'm gonna try it because I have a feeling it's gonna be absolutely beautiful to eat. Dear reader, I was right. Lovely and crispy on the outside. Chili's chill, have a kick. You didn't tell me about that. Wow. Thoroughly well fed and quite frankly, close to the edge. It's time to hydrate with a refreshing cup of boza, a fermented millet seed drink. Oh wow. It actually reminds me apple pie. Sure. Really does taste like apple pie ice cream. Incredibly, our final stop on this culinary journey was an entire smorgasbord of Istanbul staples. Spit roasted lamb, breads, rice dishes, all exquisite and beautiful in their own right. Elements of traditional family style meals found in restaurants frequented by the young and old across the city. Yeah, this is a lot more delicious when you use your hands. It's so good, I, I love lamb. Istanbul has all the right ingredients for incredible food. In fact, its food is famous all over the world. You can find it in most cities in every corner of the world. But here in Istanbul, it's the people, the proprietors, that make the food experiences in this city transcendent. Behind every door and every dish is a story, and each one is worth experiencing to the fullest. Turkey uses the Turkish lira, and so will you while you're here. Now there are a few places that will accept euros, but do not rely on that because they are few and far between. There are currency exchanges everywhere, but be careful which one you pick. Pick the wrong one and you could pay up to 5% commission on your transaction. My advice, just withdraw Lira from an ATM. And when it asks you if you want to convert from your own currency or withdraw Lira, withdraw Lira. You will get a much better exchange rate. Debit and credit cards are increasingly widely accepted, even in smaller shops and restaurants, but it is worth carrying some cash with you so you can cover taxi fare or, more importantly, so you can have some great street food experiences as well. Some words about safety. You're going to need to exercise a little more than common sense while you're here. This is by no means an unsafe city where you're really on the guard against is annoyances more than safety issues pickpockets, scams, overpricing, unscrupulous taxi drivers, that kind of thing. Generally, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If someone is persistently friendly, they probably have an agenda, which is a shame because it muddies the waters of this otherwise incredibly hospitable and friendly country. So just do the basics right, keep your valuables hidden or just leave them at the hotel. Be aware of your surroundings and you'll be absolutely fine. Is Istanbul an expensive city? No, not really. You can eat and drink for incredibly good value if you're looking in the right places. And a single journey on a metro or the tram is around 50 US cents. But inflation has added some volatility to the value of the lira, so what was cheap today 
might not be cheap tomorrow, so keep an eye on those rates. And on that note, let's do the rundown. A cup of beautiful Turkish coffee will cost you around 40 lira. A glass of beautiful Turkish beer will cost you around 20 lira. And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, you're gonna pay 125 lira, or around $4.50 US. There are a few places left in the world that seem to have a true sense of magic, a palpable feeling of uniqueness, and dare I use this word, wonder. A place that offers a glimpse into what life used to be like centuries ago, but right here in the 21st century. Istanbul is one of those places, a unique confluence of not just continents, but cultures, lifestyles, religions, epochs. Don't get me wrong, this is a modern city, a global city. But every now and then, you turn a corner and into a scene that's been going on for centuries. And as a traveler, there aren't many feelings quite like that.